I was asked to give a practitioner perspective and that's, some people might say, well, you're an academic, how can you have a practitioner perspective? And I think that'd be a fair question in a way uh, because you know, I was a practitioner for many years but I now only do one day a week in clinical practice. And um, I think there is a risk of even you know, trying to keep um, a practitioner mindset and, and having that um, weekly experience that you do get separated from the realities of what it's like to be a a consumer of research or a user of research or a, uh, someone who would be, whose practice might be informed by research. <clears throat> um, and I think one of the lessons um, uh, that um, is important for all of us to, to think about as we go forward in our research careers is how can we package up our research, how can we present it back to practitioners in a format that they would find useful and um, engaging and would actually suit fit into their context of, of time and, um, and, and, uh, uh, and what would be a, a format that they might want to use. And I think in doing research projects, um, there is often, and I feel I'm guilty of this myself, insufficient attention paid and funding allocated in the grant for actually how you're going to feed back the, the results of your study to the participants in your study. So say if you're doing you know, a, a, a study in um, primary care practices and general practices doing a randomised trial, as so I've done a number, really we should be um, working uh, to involve the practitioners, the, 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 the nurses, the GPs, the, the patients as well, and, in, and providing the feedback as we go along in a way that they'll, they, they'll get value out of. <clears throat> but it's, it's often a bit of an afterthought. It's often not sufficiently resourced. Um, we probably don't ask the practitioners and other participants enough about what the, how they would like that presented, how they'd like it done, <clears throat> and, uh, and I think it's, it's, it's not as good as it could be. Think about that in planning your project. Try to ask practitioners how they would like it done, um, what sort of format. I think a face-to-face -face is really good if you can ha make, get it to happen. Um, in the interactions that certainly in, in the research networks that I've been involved in, if you can actually get practitioners to come to a, a dinner if you've got the funding or a, and they have brief presentations on some of the projects that they've been involved in, they really enjoy that and they really appreciate it and um, you know, they get all sorts of questions about, about what the meaning of the research is, how you went about it, they're quite interested in the methods uh, because you know, there's a bit of protected time to do the thinking um, but it doesn't happen as often as we'd like. Another practitioner perspective, I guess, is the whole issue of guidelines. Um, and, uh, you know, guide, clinical practice guidelines are certainly, they're trying to coalesce evidence into a, into a form that, um, you know, is abstracted up from the, from the primary data, interpreted, compressed, and made available in a way that should help guide decision making in practice. Um, and I've been involved and am involved in a number of guidelines processes, and it's interesting how much variation there is in the way different groups go about that and how much consideration of practitioner needs and, and practitioner, um, how the guidelines might be used uh, in, is in the process. Most practitioners have had, many, every practitioner has had the experience for a clinical practice guideline, arrive with a thump on their desk um, and, and perhaps never open it. Um, and that's a huge waste of resource because a lot of work goes into them. I mean, people put enormous amounts of efforts into looking at the literature, uh, you know, uh, looking at meta-analyses of clinical trials, debating what the evidence says, trying to synthesise it into, into a, a, something that's reasonably current and concise. Um, you know, all of that uh, goes on and then not a lot happens, unfortunately, sometimes with the actual dissemination implementation. Um, in our current system. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, it, it is an area where we, we, the practitioner perspective perhaps isn't heard loudly enough and that might be why the, the, the process is so kind of skewed to the, to the development of the guideline phase and the getting the document done phase and so little to the what do we actually do with it in terms of supporting dissemination, supporting implementation, evaluating uptake, evaluating use, you know, getting feedback from practitioners, 
uh, and, um, uh, and then you know, taking that back to the guideline group. I guess for um, knowledge exchange and is, um, is the, the, some of the stuff that gets read by practitioners is stuff that happens to be lying around their surgery. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about GPs in particular here, but not only GPs, practice nurses and others, I think. And you know, some of the medical publications, which um, uh, you know, a medical observer, Australian doctor, people read those things when they're having a cup of tea, you know, and they've got a mini, you know, tiny break at lunchtime, and they'll like, flick through, and there's this little short piece about, you know, study shows that. Um, and so those, uh, those uh, avenues are actually quite useful. I think, you know, Australian Doctor is still the most widely read medical publication in the country. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not going to get you an impact factor, um, that's for sure. Um, but uh, in, terms of, uh, uh, in terms of actually reaching your audience, it might be quite useful. But the message, you know, G uh, doctors and, and others and nurses don't, are, are not terribly kind of... Um, pleased to see another research article that says GPs don't know how to, um, or primary care is failing in this way. And so, and you can't control the journalists, that, but you can try to have the message put out in a way that, that understands the challenges, but also uh, has a positive message whenever it's there. Uh, because I think, you know, practitioners, particularly if it's a research project they've been involved in, and then the way they see it reported is GPs don't know how to doesn't really enamour them for the next time you go and ask them to take part either. Um, so I think it's worth interacting with those publications but to be, to be aware of, of how you might pitch the message in a way that's you know, trying to emphasise um, the, 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 the context and emphasise the, the, um, the positives uh, as well as, you know, of course, being honest about, about where practice could change. Practitioners are not uninterested in research. They are definitely interested in research. It's how you kind of, you know, make it available in a format that they can actually make use of. Mm -hmm.